In this video, I will walk through two different methods to create a waterfall chart with Excel. Hello everyone, Jonathan here with Excel Help Now. And today's video is gonna be walking through how to create this waterfall chart with two different methods. One will be using the standard Excel built-in waterfall chart method, and then a sec will be using a stacked column chart. Both get us to the same result. One is much less effort than the other, and I'll walk through the pros and cons of each. So I'll just start off with talking about what a waterfall chart is. And a waterfall chart is a great way of graphically depicting a starting and ending value, and then be able to explain how you got there. So if you work in corporate finance, I'm sure you've heard the term a walk or a bridge, but basically it's any type of variance analysis of being able to graphically depict what was your starting point, what was your ending point, and what were the, the drivers that got you there. So this example, I have just a, a PL net income example where we had a 2022 ending net income and where we're at right now as far as year to date net income. And then I have a volume driver, a decreased travel initiative. We have some headwinds with inflation. So that's a negative. And then just an all other bucket to get us to 330 for where we're at today. And then what our outlook looks like for the rest of the year, we have a volume bar that's a, a green. So that's an increase in net income and then a red of inflation and that's decrease in net income to get us to ending 2023 net income of 355. So that's just one example. You can use this for any financial uh, line item or balance sheet item. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can do it for statistics. So like employee headcount or turnover, a lot of different ways that you can use a template for waterfalls, but this is just one example. And I'll walk through this. Excel has made it really simple with their chart template for waterfalls. So I'll, I'll explain how to use it. And then we'll add a couple finishing touches to make it look nice and clean like we have right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our, our chart. We'll start with a blank slate here. And so I just have the, the values. This is how to set up using Excel's waterfall chart method will be just the your starting point And then any increases or decreases, you don't need to flag them as increase or decrease, just put them as positive or negative. And then if you want an intermediate bar, you could have that be an intermediate sum. You don't have to have that. And if you do, then the remaining uh, pluses and minuses, you can have as many as you want. Um, I have six different buckets here. You can have more than that and then a final ending value. So uh, once you have your, your numbers and your categories, you can go ahead and just select your, your table and then go up to insert and then go to your chart section. And then there's this waterfall chart here. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then I will just blow that up since it brought it in. This is just a standard Excel chart type. Okay. So it's going to bring it in and look something like this, where it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now. And so you can see we have increase, decrease, decrease in a total. And so what you can do is first thing would be just selecting what are your total ones. So if you double click any of your buckets and then right click, you can set as total. So we'll go ahead and set that net income. And then we'll do the same thing for our year to date net income. So just double click and then do set as net income or set as total. And then our final ending, we'll go ahead and set as total. So that brings in our, our three total buckets. If you don't want this intermediate, you can just do the double click again and clear total. So that's how to get rid of it. But we want that. So we're going to go ahead and set to total. Okay, so we have those. And then a second helpful tip is if you go up here to your legend, and so if we double click and just get our increase, you can see it defaults to this, this blue. Well, I think for an increase, it just makes a whole lot more sense to have that be a solid fill and do a green. So green is increased. That's a good thing. We'll do the same thing. We have an orange default for a decrease. We'll change that to a red and so it go excel will go ahead and highlight all the decrease buckets so anything negative with that red so you don't have to manually go into each individual one and then if you add any more remove any it'll keep that color scheme and then we'll do that one more time for the the totals and we can make that let's do a different blue let's do this blue right here so now we have our color schemes looks really good we can go ahead and delete that legend now. Chart title, we can just call this 2023 net income waterfall. Okay. We can remove these grid lines as well. So just select the chart area. 
get your grid lines highlighted, just click delete. And then it's also going to bring in these um, connecting lines. So if you want to just select those, bring up our, our chart series, do control one, and it shows connector lines and you can remove those. I don't think they look the best. And then our, our gap width. So this is how much gap between our buckets. It's going to default to 50. You can play around with that and see. So 25% makes it a little bit smaller gap. I like that look. Next thing I like to do just to add a little bit more professionalism to the, the chart is to select one of our buckets here. And then we'll go to effects. We'll go to shadow and then drop down this presets. And then we are going to do offset left. And so you can see it just puts a little bit of a, a shadow on the left. So you read these from left to right. So I think that just makes it look a little bit more professional and stand out. And so um, something else I like to do is we'll highlight our plot area and go to borders. And I think adding a solid line around the border, we can do it um, like a dark black and increase the point to like 1.25. So it just highlights the waterfall. I have this black line around it. And then if we click up here to highlight the whole chart area, we can do something similar. We'll do a solid line. We'll do black. We'll do 1.25. So now our whole chart area is designated as black just to block it off. If it's on a spreadsheet with a lot of different numbers, it kind of just makes you your eyes gravitate towards the waterfall. And then we can select the chart area again, do control B to highlight everything just to make all the numbers and labels stand out. And at that point, I, I think this is done. This looks really clean, um, really professional looking. And so let's just walk through just how some of these numbers work. So let's change this to, to 150. You can see it scales down and automatically uh, adjust everything. So we have the 125, we can make that 50. You can see it adjust. Now we can even flip this to minus 50. And so that's what makes this really great is it's going to go ahead and change that color scheme for us. So we were at 50 green. Now we're at negative 50 red, which is what you want. We'll take that, this next guy, 50, make him a negative 15, that minus 80. Let's make that 75. So it, it auto adjust and the color scheme stay intact. So this is, this is going to take care of 90%, I would say of your, waterfall needs and i think it's if you're working corporate finance you need to have this in your 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 tool belt of excel knowledge just be able to make a waterfall quickly professionally that really can just tell the story of what you're trying to explain so that's that's the first example and so you know this like i said 90 percent of your of any of your waterfalls this is gonna take care of them but what it doesn't allow you to do is to be able to split these bars. So I'm going to just preview uh, a second template I have here of what um, a waterfall chart looks like that's going to have those bars split. And so in order to do this, which there is times where you want to be able to parse out like this volume bar of 125 into two different buckets. In order to do this type of waterfall, you got to do the and a different method of just using stack columns. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk through an example, a basic waterfall. So we're gonna replicate exactly what we did here, just so you have an, a sense of how to create a stacked column chart that is a waterfall. And then I'll have a follow-up video that'll go into more detail of how we create these intermediate bars that are split and also our, um, our step values that are, are split as well. So this takes a little bit more effort to get here, um, but if, if it's, if if what you're doing in waterfalling requires this, then you, you can't use Excel's built-in waterfall function. You're gonna have to use a stacked column chart. So I'll walk through how, how we do that. So let's just get rid of this waterfall. And so this was how we set up our first table using Excel's waterfall chart template. And the second one is gonna look pretty similar, but we do have to add um, an, two additional columns just so we can have differentiators of our different column chart areas. So I have a bottom and I have an absolute value and a change column here. And so the bottom is just gonna be to start our starting value. And this absolute value column is just gonna be the absolute value of our change. So you have to have this in order for the buckets to be the right size. So your change won't, won't change, <laughs> your change won't change. 
the, the values in your change column are going to match what was over here. They can be pluses or minuses, but your absolute value will just take the absolute value of those changes. We have the intermediate. And so the bottom here, this is where we have to have some additional logic. And I have the formula in there that I use in order to make sure that, that those column the stack columns work correctly. And so it's if and h6 is less than zero and h5. So h6 and h5 are less than zero. And then I'm going to take f5 plus h6. If not, then I'm going to take another if statement. If h6 is less than zero, then f5 plus, plus h5 plus h6. Otherwise, I'm going to do if h5 is less than zero, then f5. Otherwise, f5 plus H5. So a lot of logic, but basically it's going to look at the scenarios if it's two negatives in a row or positive and negative, and negative and positive or positive and positive. We got to change what our, our starting value is. So um, take a second, grab that formula, make sure if you have different cell references to grab them, but that will get you the right column chart logic. So we'll go ahead and just select our area. We're going to go to insert. We're going to go up to charts and then we're going to do this second one, the stacked column chart. Okay, so we're going to bring that in. We'll blow it up here just so we have it. Okay, then I am going to hide that first section we had. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so what we have here is not a waterfall, right? This looks much different than what we want. So the first thing we're going to do is just select it, go to chart design, select data. And so we we'll actually not need this change section. We're just going to need the bottom and absolute. So just unselect change and then click OK. OK, we're looking a little bit closer. And so the second thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight the, the bottom section here. And then we'll do Control-1 to bring up our format data series. We'll do that same blue color we had before. And so you can see, unfortunately, we can't designate if it's a if it's an increase, decrease, or a total, we've got to do everything essentially manual. And so you can highlight them all, change them to the blue you want, and then you have to go in and just manually double click each one of the intermediate bars. So if you're not if you're not going to have the split bars, then there really is no need to, to create the waterfall like this because it is much more involved and it, it'll look the exact same as the other waterfall chart. But if you do want to have the split bars, you do need to know how to use this method. So we got our totals. Um, we'll go ahead and select everything again. That gap width is really wide. Let's knock that down to 25. That's what we had before. And so here, um, this is where unfortunately you don't get the nice increase, decrease designations. You've got to look at each one and know if that's a positive or negative. So um, the first two are are positive changes. So you can just double click them, select them, and we can just do the manual highlighting ourselves. Green, green. The next two are negative 80 and negative 15. So we've got to make those red. And so unfortunately, if your your bucketing changes, you will have to just update the colors. But this is going to get us to the exact same result as we had before. Like I said, just a lot more work. And if you don't need the intermediate splits, then I would never you know, advise using this method, but if you do see yourself wanting more of an advanced waterfall in the future, then it's really helpful to know how to do this. So we'll go net income waterfall again. I'll add that chart title. Okay, and then we had our effect before. Let's go to effects, preset. Let's do that offset left, make it look nice and clean. And you have to do that individually for our, our totals as well. Okay, got that. Let's remove our, our grid lines here. We can add our, our chart border like I added on the previous one. We'll do solid line, the black, we'll do 1.25, and then we'll do our chart area, the same thing. We'll go black, 1.25, highlight everything, do a control B to, to bold it. And then the last thing we can do is we can add in our do uh we can add in our data label so select your your blue your, your green and your red and then we'll go to data labels and then we're going to go to more options 
and then we can just go value from cells. So this is where we're going to pick up our, our change column here. Okay, click OK, and then remove the values like that. So that way you can bring in your positive and negative. And this one, unfortunately, you can hold down shift to get these to stay you know, in the center. But this again is you're going to have to be a little bit more manual here if you want it to be below if it's negative and above if it's positive. You've got to do that manual movement yourself. Like I said, this, unfortunately, this does take a little bit of work, but before Excel introduced the waterfall chart type, this is how you had to create waterfalls in Excel. So, um, and then we'll add our data labels to our totals. So we'll do, let's see, inside base. Let's do inside in, make it up top. It's going to default to a color you can barely see. Let's change that text options. Make that a white. Do the same for our other two um, subtotals here. Add data label inside base, inside in, and then one more inside in. Okay, so. You can see we have very similar looking waterfalls, but the effort to do this and just the ongoing functionality of this waterfall compared to this one is much different. So let's say we change this to, to minus 50. I've got the logic where it works, but now you can see everything just kind of shifted. Um, this is still, this is green. Now I'm gonna have to go over and change that manually to a red. I need to reposition my my labels now so it, it just doesn't it just doesn't work as as smoothly as the the native chart but it does work and like i said it, it could be required for you if you want to do more of an advanced look but if you just want to do a basic waterfall then definitely just stick to the chart waterfall function that is native to excel really helpful really useful looking chart i hope you found this helpful uh, I do have a link in the description, so if you really like how this waterfall turned out and want access to both the basic and the advanced where we have these splits here, you can remove these splits, you can change them. So all this is, like I said, the advanced section. So I have this exact template available for sale in Etsy. It's linked in the description. Otherwise, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I will have a follow-up video that will walk through how to create the advanced one. So be on the lookout for that. Otherwise, thank you for watching and God bless.